What if the old tire from your car could be turned into steel for building skyscrapers? And that truck tires are taken apart, with the rubber used for roads and they're still used as fuel in cement factories. Even airplane tires, 90% of them, are reused up to 10 times, saving millions of dollars. From shredding to smelting, this is how almost 350 billion tires are recycled each year in factories. It all starts when an old tire is taken off of a vehicle. Whether it's from a car, truck, or airplane, the tire is collected and separated from its wheel. Wheels, usually made of aluminum or steel, are melted and reshaped into new products. Tires, however, follow a different process because they're made of rubber mixed with steel. Inside each tire is a network of steel wires that help it stay strong and hold its shape. Before recycling can begin, these wires must be removed. For smaller tires, machines quickly grip the tire and pull the wires out. Larger tires from trucks and heavy machinery need more powerful machines and strong mechanical arms that clamp onto the tire sides and pull the thick wires out with force. Once removed, the wires are bundled together and sent off to be melted down and turned into products like rebar, steel rods used to reinforce concrete. Removing the wires is essential because it makes shredding the rubber easier and prevents damage to the machines. With the steel wires removed, the tires head to the shredding factory. Massive industrial shredders with spinning blades tear through the rubber, breaking it into smaller pieces. The air vibrates with the sound of metal grinding against rubber as the chunks drop onto conveyor belts. These pieces, called tire-derived aggregate, have a surprising number of uses. In construction, shredded rubber works as a lightweight backfill for retaining walls, gas trench wells, and road insulation. Its flexibility helps absorb vibrations and reduce noise, making it perfect for sound barriers along highways and railroad tracks. By dampening vibrations, it also improves the comfort of train rides and protects the tracks from wear and tear. Plus, the rubber's drainage properties help prevent water buildup, adding stability to building foundations. Another major use is as fuel. Cement factories burn shredded tires at extremely high temperatures, up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. The rubber burns efficiently, producing intense heat that melts raw materials used to make cement. The steel left in the shredded tires also acts as a source of iron, reducing the need for additional raw materials. This method not only recycles the rubber, but also lowers production costs and energy consumption. The high temperatures burn the rubber cleanly, minimizing harmful emissions. Some factories have even modified their kilns to handle shredded tires, cutting down the reliance on fossil fuels. This process is part of a growing movement toward a circular economy, where waste materials are reused to create new products, reducing the demand for new resources. Not every tire ends up in the shredder. Many get a second life through retreading, a process that's especially common for commercial trucks and airplanes, where replacing tires is expensive. In fact, about 90% of aircraft tires are retreaded up to 10 times, thanks to their tough casings that can handle repeated use. The process begins with a thorough inspection. Workers check each tire for visible damage like cracks, cuts, or punctures. But some problems are hidden beneath the surface, so factories use a technology called shearography. This imaging technique scans the tire's internal structure, revealing any weaknesses that might affect performance. Only tires with solid damage-free casings move on to the next step. Next comes buffing. High-speed grinders remove the worn tread, stripping away the outer layer of rubber until the undertread is exposed. This ensures that the new rubber will bond properly. If any damaged areas are found, they're repaired using melted rubber, applied like glue to seal the imperfections. The surface is then smoothed out, leaving the casing clean and ready for its new tread. At this stage, the process splits into two methods, pre-cure and mold cure. In pre-cure retreading, workers apply a strip of cushioned gum rubber to the tire casing, followed by a pre-cured tread that already has a familiar tire pattern. The entire tire is then wrapped in a flexible rubber envelope that fits snugly around its shape. This envelope creates a vacuum seal, ensuring even pressure during the next step. The tire is placed in a curing chamber where heat and pressure bond the new tread to the casing, creating a strong, durable tire. This method is popular for commercial trucks because it's quick, efficient, and extends the tire's lifespan without needing a full replacement. Mold cure retreading, on the other hand, works more like making a brand new tire. After repairing the case, liquid rubber is applied as a continuous strip using computer-controlled equipment. This ensures just the right amount of rubber is used, preventing waste and ensuring consistency. The tire is then placed into a mold that shapes the tread directly onto the casing. The mold is coated with a release agent to keep the rubber from sticking, and within minutes, heat and pressure form a fresh tread pattern that looks and performs like a new tire. This method is often used for larger tires on trucks and heavy machinery because it offers more flexibility in tread design. 
If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. While retreading is happening, the steel wires removed from the tires continue their journey. Bundled together, they're transported to Steelworks, where advanced AI systems take over. Using cameras and sensors, these systems inspect each layer of scrap metal as it's unloaded from trucks. Heavier pieces are more valuable since they produce more molten steel when melted. The AI ensures only high quality scrap is used, making the recycling process faster, more efficient, and cost effective. Once sorted, the scrap metal is loaded into massive electric furnaces. High voltage electrodes generate intense heat and the air crackles with energy as the steel begins to melt, reaching temperatures as high as 1,600 degrees Celsius, aka 2,912 degrees Fahrenheit. As the steel liquefies, impurities rise to the surface and are carefully skimmed away, leaving clean, molten metal ready for shaping. Skilled operators monitor the process closely, making sure that the steel reaches the right temperature and composition. The molten steel is then poured into molds to form long rectangular bars called billets. After cooling, the billets are transported to rolling mills, where they're reheated and passed through powerful rollers that stretch and thin them out into long steel rods. These rods are cut to size, bundled together, and shipped to construction sites, where they're used to reinforce concrete in buildings, bridges, and highways. Every single part of the process is designed for maximum efficiency. Factories even reuse the heat from their furnaces to reduce energy consumption. Some steel plants go a step further, using this waste to heat the warm greenhouses, where crops like tomatoes, strawberries, and cucumbers are grown. But recycling doesn't stop with steel. Some tires are broken down using advanced chemical processes that recover valuable materials. One method, called pyrolysis, heats shredded tires in an oxygen-free environment. Without oxygen, the rubber breaks down into fuel gas, oils, and carbon black, which is a fine powder used in industrial tires, inks, and pigments. While the carbon black produced through pyrolysis is lower in quality than the original, researchers are working to improve its properties for wider use. Pyrolysis is becoming more popular because it recovers valuable resources while reducing waste, making it a key part of the circular economy. But it requires specialized equipment and precise control of temperature and pressure to ensure the best results. Another way to recycle tires is through cryogenic recycling. This method uses liquid nitrogen to freeze tires until they're brittle. Once frozen, the rubber shatters into small pieces called crumb rubber. This material is strong, flexible, and perfect for things like sports flooring, asphalt, and construction products. It's also great for making fine rubber powders used in industrial products and high-performance asphalt. But because cryogenic recycling uses a lot of energy, it costs more than other methods, so it's mainly used for special products. Still, as more industries look for eco-friendly materials, demand for high-quality recycled rubber keeps growing. Recycled rubber shows up in more everyday products than you might think. Mixed with asphalt, it makes roads that are more flexible and less likely to crack. That's why rubber-modified asphalt is used for highways, parking lots, and airport runways. It lasts longer and needs less maintenance. You'll also find recycled rubber molded into speed bumps, playground surfaces that soften falls, and mats that keep livestock comfortable. In construction, rubber is mixed with concrete to create lightweight, shock-absorbing materials that help buildings stay quieter and more energy efficient. Even roofing shingles are made from recycled rubber. They last twice as long as traditional shingles and can withstand hail and strong winds, making them a popular choice in storm-prone areas. But recycling isn't the only option. Tires are often repurposed into completely new objects. Old tires become swings, fitness equipment, and crash barriers at racetracks. Tractor tires are turned into sturdy water troughs for livestock. Entire homes can even be built using earth-packed tires as walls, which is a technique known as earth-strip construction. These homes stay warm in winter and cool in summer without needing much energy. And it's not just practical uses. Some artists turn discarded tires into sculptures and furniture, proving that even worn-out tires can be turned into something useful and beautiful. Back at the recycling plants, the process finishes with a final check. Retreaded tires are inspected to make sure that they meet safety standards. Any leftover rubber from the process doesn't go to waste. It's collected and sold to companies that use it to pave roads. In the end, it's a system that cuts down on waste and saves valuable resources, showing that even the most worn out tire can be put to good use. And that's how 350 billion tires are recycled each year, turning old rubber into new products while helping the planet. Which part of the process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating factory processes.